Yo guys, what's going on? It's your boy Soren here today with another tutorial. The intro you just saw is what we're going to be going ahead and creating today. This is going to be a little intro to motion graphics. It's going to be a follow along tutorial on how to make a really simple motion graphics intro that anyone who's just now picking up the program could do. So the first thing we're going to do is obviously make a new composition. I'm going to go ahead and call it intro and uh, I'm making mine 1080p, 60 frames per second and I'm, we're going to be making it at about 5 seconds. Alright, so we're going to be working with a lot of solid layers here, so you're going to have to layer, new, and solid. Go ahead and pick a color you like. Oh, I'm just going to pick a light blue here. And the first thing we're going to be doing is changing the position on it. So if you hit P on your keyboard while the layer is selected, you'll bring up the position keyframes for it. And I want it to come in from screen right. So we're going to go ahead and move it all the way over to the left by just clicking and dragging on the X component of the uh, position coordinates here. We're going to click the stopwatch to create our first keyframe, move about a quarter of a second forward, and we're going to drag it not all the way to the center, but past that even to create a, a kind of bouncy transition. And then we're going to go another half a second forward and drag it back to the middle. You can set that keyframe very precisely if you know the exact width of your composition just by taking the width and dividing it by two. So for me, that's 960. Now you're going to hit position that will highlight all the keyframes and you're going to go into your graph editor by clicking this button just uh, above the parent drop down box. You're going to click and drag to highlight all the keyframes, hit the third button from the right to easy ease them in. And then now you're going to select this first keyframe and drag it all the way up. So it starts, it comes in fast and then slows down and then you're going to select the last keyframe and drag that up a little bit so that way it comes in fast goes past the center point slows down and then snaps back so it'll look like that if you're getting a problem where it looks like it's it's going to the point you set it at and then it goes a little bit farther unwanted what you're gonna do is highlight all of your keyframes right click go to keyframe interpolation Go to spatial interpolation and select linear and that should fix your problem. Perfect. All right, so now I want some uh, dots to come in and then it'll animate back out and we'll reveal our text. So you're gonna create another solid layer, change the color up if you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and pick a dark blue here. Perfect, okay. And then now we're gonna go ahead and select our ellipse mask tool. If it's not there for you, Click and hold it and uh, select the ellipse option. So now you're going to go to the center of your screen, click and drag while holding control and shift to get a perfect circle. And we're just going to have it be quite large. All right, good. So now we're going to have it come in from nothing basically. So we're going to hit S on our, uh, on our keyboard to bring up the scaling. We're going to click on the stopwatch to create our first key point or keyframe and change the scaling down to zero. We're gonna move about half a second forward or so and change it not to 100 but past it even because we're gonna have a little bit of a bouncy effect here. So that's at about 113, you can really just eyeball that. We're gonna go a few frames forward, bring it down to below 100. And then we're gonna go forward again, bring it slightly past our target value, which is 100 just slightly past it and then gonna go a few frames forward again bring it slightly below it and then go another few frames and we're gonna end it off at 100 so now if you go into your graph editor select all of your keyframes and easy ease them in take uh, take the line in between the second and first keyframe and make sure it starts out slow and ends up fast by moving this handle down and you'll have a nice bouncy transition like so all right, and then after a few seconds of this being on screen, we're going to want it to uh, get smaller. That way we can reveal our text. So we're just going to go a little bit, have it stationary, and then it's going to animate back out. So we're going to set a keyframe on the scale to make sure it stays the size of 100. Go forward again in about another quarter second, and then have it go down to, we'll say about 40, 45%. And we're, but we're gonna do another bouncy transition. So you're just gonna repeat what you did at the beginning, but in the opposite direction. So we're gonna go a little bit past it, a few keyframes forward, 
go a little bit larger than it, a few keyframes forward, go slightly less than it, a few keyframes forward, go slightly more, and then end it off right at where we want it to be at 45%. Again, if we go back to our graph editor, these are all easy eased already, and we're just going to make sure it comes in slow to fast. We'll see here that when we ran preview, it has a nice fluid motion. Perfect. All right, so now I want more than one dot popping up in the same place, but so we don't have to keep remaking these keyframes, we're just going to highlight this layer, hit Control D on our keyboard to duplicate it. Go up to layer, solid settings, and then just change the color and all the keyframes will be the same. So I'm just gonna get a little bit like a medium blue here. Good old crayon box blue. And to make sure that it's not completely overtaking our bottom layer, I'm gonna go back to scale, select all our keyframes and go to the graph editor. And then now if I select all these scales, except for the first one, I can click and drag them down. That way it ends up being smaller. So now it's going to pop up like that and then go back like that. And then I want to do this process one more time just so I can have three colors on here. And we're going to go ahead and go with a white color. And going to do the same process with the scaling to change it up so that way there's a bit of offset in size. Perfect. If for some reason you're your lines start to dip, that's fine. Just go ahead and adjust your handles. Let me actually double check. Everything else is looking fine, perfect. Let's go ahead and give this a RAM preview. Awesome. All right, so we're looking good. And then now the last thing is, it's in the center, but we want our text to center. So we're gonna move this off to, we're gonna go ahead and do the left for this. So you're going to select all of these layers by clicking on the top one, holding down shift and clicking on the bottom of the circles. And you're going to hit position or you're going to hit P on your keyboard, bring up the position again. You're going to keyframe those by hitting the stopwatch. And we're just going to have it go over. We're going to move about half a second over and we're just going to have them move over to the left. So we're going to grab the X component, move it to the left. Perfect. Now we're going to hit the graph editor. Select all of our keyframes, easy ease them. Go to the middle, select one keyframe, bring it to the center, select the other keyframe, bring it to the center so it starts off fast and slow. And it just moves over nice and gently. Perfect. So while this is here, we're going to bring on our text now. So actually, first we're going to save it. Always save it because my After Effects crashes way too much. <laughs> so make sure you save it right now. If you're working with me and you haven't saved it yet, save it, please. All right, good. Perfect. All right, so now we're going to create our text. We're just going to do something nice and simple. So choose any font you'd like. Choose any color of text you'd like. I'm going to use like a real pale blue for my text, just type it anywhere. I'm gonna go ahead, use my own name, Sorn, perfect. Actually, no, we're gonna go with white so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. All right, so when this is all the way over, your text should be about centered and just to the side of it. But we can't just have the text appear out of nowhere. So we're going to have it appear from the midpoint. So what we're going to do is go ahead and solo the layer just so we can see exactly what we're working with here. And we're going to hit P on our keyboard to bring up the position. We're going to go to the end when the circle stop animating and we're going to set our position keyframe here because this is exactly where we want to end up. But if we go and move the timeline marker to where the circle start and when the word should not be visible, we're going to move it over to the left and you'll see why here in a second. So now that we have our two position keyframes, we're going to go ahead and easy ease them again in the exact same manner that we did the our, our circles. Perfect. So now this slides over. 
All right, so the next step we're gonna have to do is create a new layer and make sure it's white. It doesn't matter what the color scheme is of your intro because this layer is actually not gonna be seen. Okay, so that's white already. Now you're gonna go and take your rectangle uh, masking tool and just select half the right half of the composition and just leave it like that. All right, so what we're gonna do to make it so the words only come up, we're only we're gonna use this white layer to essentially mask out the word. So it's only gonna appear where this layer is white. So if you go over to here under the, it says TRK mat, that stands for track mat. You're gonna go ahead and hit Luma mat on Soren and make sure, or on your, your name, and make sure that the white layer is directly above it. If you don't have this TRK, the track matting here, hit toggle switches and mode and it'll bring up that drop down. So now if we unsolo this layer, I need to move this over a little bit actually, perfect. You can see that it appears, actually if we leave it solo, you can see it, it'll appear from that line and not on the other side. So if we unsolo it, we can see it's appearing from the half line, but we still got some of it cut off because it's, uh, it's not completely centered. So to fix that, we're just gonna go to the mask of our uh, masking layer. And we're gonna keyframe it. So if you hit M on your keyboard, it'll bring up the mask path. You're gonna hit the stopwatch again, go to the point where everything stops moving. And we're gonna change up where the mask is. So if you go to your universal tool, double click on the mask, it'll bring up this and you're just gonna slide it over to the side like so and then we're also going to go ahead and easy ease these keyframes just like we would normally move this over a little bit more like that and now it looks like the name is coming from the center and you can still see it coming in front a little bit. You can see where the edges are. So our last fix is if you take the tracking layer and your your name and move it underneath the circles, it'll cover that up a little bit. So now it looks like your name is coming out of the dots. All right, and then if you want, you can go ahead and add a drop shadow to your name just by right clicking on the layer with your name on it, going to layer styles and adding a drop shadow. Let that load in here. There are a lot of options on the drop shadow. I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys tinker with that on your own. You know, the distance, the spread, the size of the drop shadow, things like that. So other than that, we're gonna go and finish off this intro. Save it. And then now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this intro composition that should be on your uh, imported files panel and bring it down into this little movie clip looking button that will create a new composition in it and right where we're going to want it to end we're gonna go to the position keyframes by hitting P on our keyboard again we're gonna keyframe it up ever so slightly to get another little bouncy animation and then go forward and have it come down all the way off screen. Highlight all of these again. Go to the keyframe interpolation. Set it back to linear just because it's easier to work with. Easy ease everything in. You guys know how to do this by now. And we're just gonna set this up a little bit different. Like so. There we go. Now it should have a little jump up and then come back down. Perfect. And now just to give this a little bit more flair, we're gonna add a sort of a trail behind it. So you're gonna add some new, a new solid layer, make it uh, whatever color you want, whatever color you've been working with. I'm gonna make it this dark blue here. And then you're going to click on the position of the composition below it and just hit Control C to copy them. And you're gonna click right on the new solid you made, hit Control V and paste everything on there. So now if I put this underneath, and I just slide it over in time a little bit, you'll see the animations are happening after it. So it's kind of 
coming down in a, as a little a tail or a trailing line. I would just offset this by maybe a frame or two if I were you. And then you can do this a couple times and change up the color on them. So I'll make another one, a different, another light blue. Hold on. I'll just make it the colors of the dots. And then we'll offset it again. There we go. So now it has a cool little trail behind it. Alright, so that's pretty much it for the tutorial. If you guys have any questions, make sure you leave it down as a comment below. And uh, the project file for this will actually be in the description as well if you want to go ahead and look at what I've done. You know, compared to things you you have or if you want to just mess with it a little bit, get creative, go for it. But anyway guys, I've been Soren and I'm out. See ya.